Dual PC streaming is not only the best way for convenience for you when you're going out to stream, but it's also the best way to produce some really high quality imagery, audio fidelity, and video for your viewers. Further to that, you can free up all the resources on your gaming PC to do just that gaming. I'm very fussy when it comes to FPS, so I need to make sure that I'm getting absolutely every single one that I can. Enter dual PC streaming. For those of you who don't know me already, my name is Bradley Steinbach. I'm a variety streamer and content creator, primarily for gaming. I do videos like this. I really appreciate you dropping by the channel. Please, if you're liking the content, if you're liking the video, drop me a like, hit subscribe for more content just like this. Now where dual PC streaming can get the most difficult is trying to route that really high quality audio over from your gaming PC and into your streaming PC. There's loads of how-to videos on this already on YouTube, but some of them, for some of us that are just starting out as streamers, lack some of the finer granular details that you need to succeed when you're setting up some of the intricate hardware and software. A lot of that hardware and software is gonna be very, possibly very new to you, just like it was with me. I made a lot of mistakes when I was initially setting things up for my dual PC stream. I wanna make sure that I cover them here so that you might not have to. Where there's gonna be a lot of benefit in this video as well is some of us streamers that are not using a full tower PC as our streaming setup. Some of us are using laptops like me. I'm using quite a powerful laptop, but it is a few years old now. I think that there's a lot of streamers out there that are using old laptops or even functioning new laptops as their streaming setup. And a lot of the how-to videos on YouTube aren't covering what you'll what we'll learn about in a moment, which is the combo jack on a or combo jack line in line out on your laptop. Lucky for you, I have spent lots of time looking through Reddit, YouTube, watching all those how-to videos I mentioned, and most importantly, making a lot of my own mistakes, correcting them. And now I'm excited to share them all with you so that you don't have to make the same mistakes and work for hours and hours on trying to fix them just like I did. Over the course of this video, I'm going to talk through three methods from routing your audio from your gaming PC to your streaming PC. The first method I've seen a lot of how-to videos on already, but I did come across some troubleshooting and some errors and, and some mistakes that I made that I just want to cover in a little bit finer detail. The second method is where things get really exciting. This is going to be a fully digital solution to audio routing. And I haven't seen anyone else do a video on this subject before. So I'm really excited to share that method with you. The third option is going to be your budget option. If you don't have a mix amp, uh, a Go XLR, anything of the like. So a lot of the hardware that you're gonna see in this is something you, are things that you can buy for $30 from Amazon or less. None of the solutions I share with you today are going to require you to buy any expensive mixing gear, Go XLR, Go XLR Mini, none of that. A lot of these can be done with hardware that's hopefully sitting on the desk right in front of you right now. I'm just gonna help you to utilize it to the best of your ability. The third method, as I mentioned, is gonna be a truly budget option and you're gonna be able to connect the whole thing, hopefully for less than $30. I'm really excited to cover all this with you, so let's get right into it. Now, before I get too far into the video, I just wanna make sure that you're aware that the easiest way to route audio over from one from your gaming PC and into your streaming PC is simply through your capture cards audio source. However, there's a few caveats involved in that and this is one of the reasons I am making this video. Firstly, you're dealing with a lot of hardware. There are bound to be hiccups in this process. For example, I was using this method with no issues and then one day, all of a sudden, my stream PC decided to no longer accept audio from my gaming PC. I had to uninstall all the software I was using every time I wanted to stream and then reinstall it in order to get it to work. Obviously this was not sustainable. So it likely will work the first time you set things up this way through HDMI, which we will show you in a moment, or you will be seeing on other how-to videos on the video side of things. Your capture card should send audio over USB. However, it just sometimes it, it stops working and you have to disconnect, reconnect, download software again. So it's really unsustainable. And secondly, 
using more third-party sol software solutions that we will get into in a moment. Combine these with some of the hardware we're going to discuss and you're gonna gain a ton more control over your audio and what your listeners are going to hear. So we'll get into that in a moment. And thirdly, using the method of cloning your audio and your video over HDMI from your gaming PC to your streaming PC is also going to inhibit you from using functions like HDR and really high refresh rate. But I'm gonna to touch on that later and also in another video that I'm going to link just at the top here. Throughout the video, there's gonna be a little bit of terminology that I want you to take note of. Firstly, when I talk about the gaming PC, the gaming PC is the PC that is going to handle just that. It's going to be my primarily my gaming PC. I am going to have an instance of OBS running on it. We'll get to that later. It's not going to be for streaming, not necessarily for recording either. Now the streaming PC is where I'm going to stream to Twitch, YouTube, wherever I'm going to stream to, and that's going to have pretty much all of my peripherals attached to it. It's going to have my USB, it's going to have, uh, obviously my mix amp's going to be connected to it as well, and any other peripherals I'm using. I'm using a Sony ZV E10 to have camera. I'm attaching that via um, Elgato Cam Link. Uh, basically every single other piece of tech other than my <laughs> keyboard and mouse, which I use on my gaming PC, is going to be my streaming PC. So just take note, this is what the setup looks like. It is going to be gaming PC on the right, streaming PC on the left. Okay, let's get into the first solution. It's a little bit more commonly known and mentioned in a few other videos, but there's a few details and troubleshooting steps that I wanna highlight along the way. Have a look at this image, take a screenshot if you need to. This is going to be the use of an Astro mix amp and a couple of three and a half millimeter auxiliary cables. First, connect an HDMI 2.0 from your graphics card on your gaming PC to your capture card in the in port. Take the included USB and connect it to your streaming PC via 2.0 or 3.0. Just take note of whichever it says on your capture card because it's really important or you may wreck the signal quality. That's it for now for the video setup. Some people connect HDMI out to their monitor, but I use DisplayPort to maximize resolution, HDR, and my frame rate to 240 FPS. More on the troubleshooting side of that and the software side in just a minute. Secondly, connect your mix amp via USB to your gaming PC where you will feed the sound to your stream PC. Number three, using a standard 3.5 auxiliary cord TRS or TRRS, it doesn't matter. Connect it to the stream port on your mix amp and into the line in or mic port on your stream PC. Stay tuned at the end of this section. I'm going to share some tweaks, pitfalls, and troubleshooting steps that I had at this step of the process that I encountered and that you can overcome with this knowledge. For me, it wasn't as simple as plug and play here. Now take the exact same style of cord, a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary cord from your line out or headset port on your stream PC to the aux port on the back of your mix amp. Something to take note of is on some PCs, particularly laptops like mine, laptops only have what are called combo ports. In this instance, you will need a TRRS, very important, splitter to run line out and line in for sound in and out. It looks like this and it can be found on Amazon for around $10. That's it, your hardware is all connected. But before we get to the software setup side, I just wanna discuss some hardware troubleshooting issues that I went through so that you can overcome them and get past them yourself if they happen to come up when you're setting up your stream. Most of my issues I believe I encountered because I'm using a laptop as my streaming PC, but I imagine a lot of you all are too, so I just wanna make sure we cover these. Number one, the biggest issue I ran into personally, and it took me hours and hours of troubleshooting to eventually figure this out, was that my audio combo port on my laptop was actually not functioning properly, and ultimately it was broken. If you run into sound that is buzzy, hummy, lacking fidelity, this could be an issue that you are having. Also, if your stream PC is old enough, it might just be better to get this very, very cheap audio solution that I found. It is essentially a line in, line out over USB, and it ended up cleaning up my setup a whole lot. I'm sure it could help too. If you're just using a laptop, I felt like the sound was a thousand times better once I plugged this in and then I ran my 
microphone and my headphone jack into this using that splitter that I mentioned before. Number two, another really important thing to watch out for is that when you are connecting auxiliary audio that is powered by two different sources, aka two different PCs, you may encounter electrical interference that is going to translate into hummy, buzzy audio that could be very poor to hear. There's a really, really simple solution to this. It is called a ground loop isolator. Now, my recommendation would be to buy two for this setup, one going from your Astro mix amp to the line in on your stream PC and vice versa from the line out on your stream PC and into that auxiliary port on your Astro mix amp. This is just going to make everything way cleaner. And before you start knocking your head on the wall, I'm trying to figure out why you're getting poor audio fidelity. Just go out and buy a couple of these. I'm gonna add a link below and I'm gonna have the picture on screen for you to look at. The last issue when I was attempting to initially connect the auxiliary from the stream port on the mix amp into my laptop is my laptop actually wasn't even seeing any microphone. It wasn't seeing any audio source whatsoever. Obviously this was solved by adding that really cheap audio solution, that combo jack line in line out over USB that I mentioned before. So I really recommend that piece if you're having any issues. Let's jump over to the software side of things. So for the first setup, all we need to do is we need to head to first our control panel. We need to head to sounds. And what we need to just make sure is that we've got our default communication devices, playback and recording set to our Astro USB into our mix amp. So what that's going to look like is just make sure on your playback setting, headset earphone is your default communication device and under recording exactly the same. The headset microphone is going to be your default device. So this is gonna make sure that all of our audio is getting sent via USB into our mix amp for us to then route into our streaming PC. Next step, we're gonna download the Astro Command Center. This is going to help us control all of our audio settings in the mix amp, what our stream is hearing, what we're hearing. It's all gonna be done through software, much like the hardware alternatives. So my recommendation would be to download this from the Microsoft Store. Uh, you can download it on the Astro website, but I have found that it is a far more reliable download from the Microsoft Store, so I would recommend doing that. Download it here. Once you're done, load up the application. Now, this is also a great app if you wanna use it for the EQ settings. I'm using a different app that I will mention in other stages of this video, but this is a great place for some really good default EQ settings if you wanna use them. What I want you to focus on though now is jumping over to where it says stream port. Now this is the auxiliary port at the back where we connected the 3.5 auxiliary out, out heading to our stream PC. So this is gonna be, this is gonna allow you to control all of the audio that is being sent to your stream. This is the, obviously the overall, overall audio. Um, we've got game audio, we've got chat audio, our microphone, if you choose to plug in your microphone directly to the mix amp. And this is for the auxiliary port coming back to us. So a rule of thumb here and something that was very unexpected is my chat audio actually represents my game audio and vice versa. My game audio represents my chat audio. So in my example, whatever happened to me, I don't know, but if I turn up my game setting, that will increase my chat audio and vice versa. So as a general rule of thumb, I would take all of these bars slightly off the top, much like mine are. What I found when I put them all the way up to the top is I was actually losing sound quality and I had to drop them back just a little bit. Once you're ready, sync this to your device. You may need to jump back here after listening to your stream a few times just to tweak things and throughout your stream as well. Lastly, in terms of the gaming PC, you might be sitting there wondering, how is this stream gonna even see the gameplay on his gaming PC through the stream PC because he hasn't routed the video. Other, lots of other videos have been done on this subject, so I'm not gonna dwell on it a lot here. Jump into NVIDIA control panel to set up our displays. So a lot of other how-to videos on this subject are gonna ask you to clone your PCs. This is where things get really, really interesting. So what I'm gonna recommend instead is to right click and extend your display. So your second display is actually going to be your capture card is invisible. I'll show you what it looks like in your display settings just for your reference. So it's going to be look like this. So you're going to have 
your monitor, which is obviously my main monitor, set up next to what this is essentially the capture card. So it's going to be two extended screens. I'm going to get to how to route the video in a moment through it. So just make sure you click on number one, extend, and it will build another one out. Now why this is particularly important is if you clone a PC in Windows 11, you will lose the HDR functionality on your monitor. This is something I wrestled with for ages. I went, looked up that many Reddit how-to videos, YouTube, and I could not figure it out, but obviously Windows does not allow it entirely. So you have to use this method, firstly, if you wanna keep HDR, and also if you wanna bypass, certain capture cards have limits to, for example, 144 Hertz, 1440p. You're not going to be limited by that on your gaming monitor. I, for example, like to game at a really high refresh rate. I have a 240 Hertz monitor. So if you use this method, you're not going to be losing any frames per second or, or visual fidelity. It could even mean dropping on some capture card cases down from 4K to 1440p or 1440p down to 1080p. Just jump over to your resolution and make sure that your monitor is set to whatever it should be. In my instance, it's, it's 2560 by 1440p and my refresh rate is 240 hertz. Triple check by going to your display settings and just make sure all of the settings are correct. Make sure you've got HDR on and all of your display settings are correct. Jump into OBS. Add your display, much like I have here and like you would anywhere else. Don't worry about any of the audio settings. You can turn them all off unless you're going to be using this to record, but that's again for another video. So don't worry about any of the audio settings. Just turn them off in here. Next, what I'll get you to do is cl right click on where you see your preview of your screen, where it says full screen projector preview. You're going to want to locate your capture card. In my case, it is a Signal 4K 30, 2560 by 1440p, which is your resolution. And voila, it's going to be sending that second screen that we just set up over to your streaming PC. Now let's jump over to the stream PC and get this audio that you've routed from your game PC into your stream PC. So jump back into control panel, hit sound, and now the audio devices I want you to take note of are going to be, in my case, because I am using a USB adapter, which we'll get to in a moment, um, in order to bring the audio in through an auxiliary over digital USB, what it looks like for me the, the, on the playback side. So this is going to be my audio out to get to back to my mix amp. So that is going to be my default set as default device. That is going to be my default to get the any audio that I play on my streaming PC back into that aux port, which I showed you on the command center and back into obviously my ears. Jumping over to the recording side, what you want to look for is the microphone. So it's going to say microphone in my instance, it's CM477. That is just the USB receiver that I am using, but it could be any variety of microphone. Just make sure you see the audio coming through, you know which one to tick. So we're going to make that one our default device. That is all you need to worry about in sounds for the minute. If you're using any other USB, in my instance, I am using a, a digital USB mic over NVIDIA broadcast. I also can enable that, but we're going to do that in, in OBS anyways. So let's jump into OBS and see what the, all of this starts to look like. Now there's lots of other videos that show you how to bring your video across to OBS. So I'm not going to spend too much time, but obviously we're going to want to add that as a source. That is the video capture device. You can call that capture card or whatever you want to call it. Um, NZXT signal 4K 30 video. That is my capture card. As I said, lots of other videos do this, so I'm not going to cover it here. What I want you to take mention of is now you see video capture device as an audio source as well. I just want you to mute that because you're not going to need that. Again, going back to some of the pitfalls that I encountered is sometimes this audio is going to work over HDMI and sometimes it is not. So we're just gonna go ahead and turn that one off. 
The next thing I want you to do to keep this simple is just to add an audio input capture. Again, you can call this whatever you want. You could call this mic in, you could call this astro mix amp sound, whatever you want to call it. Now we're going to look for our default device. In this instance, it is the microphone CM477 in a series of numbers. Again, it may be different on yours. And then you're going to start to see that audio input capture um, spiking, which was a really good feeling after I took a long time to set things up. And in OBS is where you can start to segment whatever audio you want on whatever track. Again, there's other, other videos that are going to take you through this. And there you go. You have now successfully routed audio from your gaming PC through USB into your mix amp through 3.5 auxiliary into your streaming PC and obviously back out and into the mix amp. Just make sure you do a little bit of testing here. Jump on YouTube over on your gaming PC. Maybe just play this video and watch the audio bars go up and down, see where they're landing. Again, general rule of thumb is to have audio peaking in this sort of range here, anything beyond the red and you're going to start losing out on audio. Now I promised I would talk about troubleshooting as well. So the last thing I wanted to mention is one of the problems I had when initially doing this setup, and it may be because I'm using a laptop to stream to. So in my laptop, I have a standard 3.5 millimeter combo jack. And for whatever reason, when I was taking a splitter out of the combo jack, I was plugging in my auxiliary from the stream port at the mix amp into the stream PC it wasn't recognizing it appropriately and sometimes even at all. So it wasn't pulling any of the audio into the PC. Another issue that I was getting that I had to do a lot of troubleshooting for, and this was where it got really complicated because the sound actually was working. I was pulling audio from my mix amp into my stream PC. However, the audio was really lacking any fidelity. It was buzzy, it was hummy. Um, I, it was it was passable, but it was very average. So what I actually found out after a ton of testing is that my combo jack may be old, it may need an update. So I ended up going out and purchasing this USB combo jack from Amazon. It was about a $12 solution when I bought it. And all of a sudden I've got a digital audio solution through one of my USB ports. So highly recommend doing that if you are using a laptop or perhaps just an older streaming PC. And now on to solution number two, which is going to be our entirely digital audio solution using optical Toslink USB to connect the whole system from gaming PC to streaming PC. We're not going to be using any of that legacy audio being auxiliary. Here's a quick overview that I just want you to take note of a few things. So a couple of, of really, really minor changes, but substantial changes in the grand scheme of thing are just around the auxiliary ports obviously changing to your, your USB. And then on the other side, you've got the Toslink optical replacing the aforementioned USB. Now, before we get started, all of our video settings are going to be the same, so we're not going to touch on them again. So just copy from method one and into method two. This time, starting from square one with no hardware connected, use a digital audio, toss link, optical, whatever you happen to call them in the country that you reside in, from your gaming PC motherboard into the optical port on your mix amp. That is it for connectivity from a hardware side for this setup on your gaming PC. Then connect your USB from your mix amp to your stream PC and using the same method with the auxiliary cord from method one from the headphone out or line out to your aux port on the back of your mix amp. Now all the sound will be routed digitally over optical through USB and the only reason we use that other auxiliary cord back into the mix amp is to hear any music that you're playing to your stream on your streaming PC or any of your Twitch alerts or chat alerts etc you name it you can hear basically what you're doing on your streaming pc all right now on the software side for setup number two this is where things get really really easy so jump back over to your control panel head to hardware and sound and into sound now instead of having the astro pro voice as the default device you're going to want to scroll down wherever you're going to find real tech digital output. So this is what you're going to want to set as your default device so that you are sending all of the, all of the audio data digitally through your toss link or your optical cord 
into your mix amp and obviously out to your streaming PC through the USB. So set that as your default device and it is going to send all your audio to the mix amp. Now back to our streaming PC for the fully digital solution. This is where things get really exciting. So we're just gonna jump back into our control panel, head to sound just like we did before. Now we're going to have our headset earphone voice just like we had on our gaming PC in the last setup. This is going to be our default device for playback here jump over to the recording side and here we go now we have a line in that is capable of taking the audio from our gaming pc via the optical toss link into our mix amp and out through usb a fully digital sound solution so i'm going to want you to enable this as your default device jump back over to your obs obviously after you've set up your video stream click on plus audio input capture you can call this whatever you want it doesn't matter um, jump to line astro mix amp pro game and you have just routed your audio all the way across now we don't want to forget our discord as well so jump into discord into our settings now what i found really easy in discord is just set things up to be your input device exactly like we had them before on the gaming pc when we had the usb plugged in so we have it set up to headset microphone astro mix amp voice headphones for our output device astro mix amp voice Lastly, don't forget about the auxiliary that is going to be taking the audio from your stream PC and back into your mix amp. So that's going to be done exactly the same way we had it before. I use the combo jack. I connect an, a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary and I send it to my mix amp. And that is just, you're just going to want to make sure on playback that this is ready to go. So for example, in my situation, it is speakers. It could be real tech speakers, um, whatever it is on yours, but that is mine. And that will now send all of the audio from, and that I create on my streaming PC back to my headset earphones. Also any of my aler alerts, Twitch al alerts, anything that you have set up, you can listen to your music with your viewers on here. And now onto the bonus setup. This is going to be setup number three, which is going to be your, your total budget option. Uh, it's going to help you if you don't have an Astro mix amp, like I mentioned before, a Go XLR or a really expensive audio mixer. This is going to be a, a solution that may only cost you less than $30 to at route your audio from your gaming PC to your streaming PC. All you're going to need here is one of those ground loop isolators that I mentioned before as well as an auxiliary cord and just a manner to connect it to your stream PC using some of the methodologies I used before. If you do have the combo jack, obviously the splitter. If you have a line in or a line out, perfect. You don't need anything at all. First, connect the ground loop isolator to the line out port on your gaming PC and then connect the auxiliary to the ground loop isolator. On the other side, connect the other end of the auxiliary cord to your stream PC line in or mic in port. Follow the same steps above about adding the audio source in OBS and you will be done. Now what I'll say with this method is you won't have quite as much control over some of the audio that gets sent. It's just going to be a lot more of a raw function. You can make a few tweaks in the control panel, but just be mindful of that. Now for this setup, just make sure that speakers is set to your default audio device. You need to make sure that that's set so that it can send all the data, all the audio data through the 3.5 Miller auxiliary and into the mic port of your streaming PC. Now the last step for the budget setup, we can't forget we need to just make sure that our default audio devices are set up properly. So jump back into your control panel. Notice that my default device is obviously my headset and you can see that the audio is being pushed through it at the moment. Jump over to recording and you're going to see line is also being used. Um, so the last last bit that we need to check obviously we're going to be sending our audio through our speakers speakers at the moment isn't seeing anything so we need to jump back over to recording right click online click properties click listen tick listen to this device and then make sure that we are going to be listening to the the device on our speakers press apply okay jump back to playback just to make sure that it's working and here you can see audio is being routed and pushed into the speakers and into your streaming pc 
Now for your audio for this setup, it's gonna be exactly the same as the first one. So we're going to be accepting that audio from the gaming PC directly again into the microphone. In my case, it's microphone CM4477 and a series of numbers, but it's exactly the same as the first setup. That's where, what we're gonna set as our default device for recording and exactly the same setup in OBS as we had before. So that's going to be taking the PC gaming PC sound directly over auxiliary and into our streaming PC microphone port. Now as a last bit of bonus information, I just want to make a call out to an amazing new software application that I'm using at the moment, um, which is called SteelSeries Sonar. It is a completely free download and I have just found it so amazingly easy to route my audio from both PCs. It also comes with a ton of equalizers that are really good. I play a lot of Apex Legends, so there's one specifically for that to hear footsteps. I'm definitely not sponsored. This is just me uh, making a recommendation uh, to make things a lot easier. I'm not gonna go into how to set everything up in here now, but if you want some more information, join my Discord, leave me a message in the chat, and I'm happy to share any information I have and possibly make another video completely on this subject because I think it's really, really, really important. So SteelSeries Sonar, I'll leave a link, check it out. I really hope this video has helped at least one of you overcome some troubleshooting errors that you may have already had throughout the process of setting up your dual PC stream. Really hope it saves some of you a little bit of time through the process. Again, thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. Again, my name is Bradley Steinbach. If you enjoyed my content, it would mean a ton to me if you drop a like. Also, if you had any more questions, please join my Discord. The link will be in the description below. Also, drop me a comment below if you have anything you want a little bit more detail on. I am here to help. Again, thank you so much for watching. All the best.